very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is the last of the series of Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome, Jamie and Stephen. You are our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? Um, we're brothers, and we originally came from Wallasey on Merseyside, and we moved independently to Peterborough. Independently? In the same day, just different cars? Yeah, just... <laughs> you, you, you actually have to be funny to live on Merseyside, so we were both driven out the town, basically. So. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I think you're going to be fantastic this afternoon. Very best of luck to you. Uh, welcome to Henry and Steve. Where did you come from? Um, at the moment, I'm living in Shrewsbury, and Henrietta, my daughter, she's in Oxford at university. Um, we're originally from East Yorkshire. Um, Henry, what, what are you studying? Uh, mathematics. Mathematics, very good. Let's hope there are lots of mathematics questions on the show this afternoon. <laughs> uh, and very best of luck to both of you. And welcome back, Rob and Matthew. You were on the show last time. We give everyone two chances, obviously, to reach the final, and today is your last chance. You nearly went all the way last time, didn't we? We did. We've only just stopped crying. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, better luck this time. And finally, we've got Simon and Craig back. You were on the show last time as well. Remind us how you two know each other. Um, we both play for the same football team, that's how we meet each other. Um, we've known each other around two years now. Very good. And how did you do last time? Um, Craig did well, I didn't do very well. Yeah. You got to round two, didn't you? Yeah, but I didn't get any questions right, I got them all wrong. Oh dear, <laughs> you see, that's, yeah, that's, that's going to be a handicap, I can see. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll find out more about you all throughout the show. Uh, but meanwhile, it'd be wrong of me to go a step further without introducing the man with all the facts and figures, the man who knows everything, the man to whom we all turn, my pointless friend, Richard. <laughs> Oh, Richard, last show in the series. I know, last, last show. Last show, mute. sad day. It's a very sad day. Uh, yeah, so we've had, uh, it's our 30th show. We've had 55 pointless answers, uh, given away over £50,000. Have we? We have, yeah. I, every day I predict who's going to win. I've got it right twice. <laughs> last time I said Matthew and Rob were going to win, and they got very, very, very close. Mm -hmm. So I am going to go for them again. I'm going to go for Matthew and Rob. OK, we've asked every question on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, all our players need to do is score as few points as they can. And they do that by searching out those obscure answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a Pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, Caroline and Simon won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back down at £1,000. <laughs> Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you have to be very careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. Oh. Mm. And you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Movie stars. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Mel Gibson films as they could. Mel Gibson films. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Mel Gibson has received an acting credit. Uh, as always, we're not looking for TV films, short films, documentaries, or films yet unreleased. Voice performances do count, though. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Right, Jamie and Stephen, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. OK, Stephen, so we are looking for Mel Gibson films. Right. You're a, you're a dentist. I am a dentist, yes. What are your hobbies? My hobbies? Yeah, um... you must have some. <laughs> I go cycling quite a bit. I've done a couple of London to Paris bike rides. Wow, so do you carry the bike onto the ferry, do you? Or... Uh, well, yeah, that's right. You, and you have to, you have to, you know, static bike, you have to do it all the way over to Calais. And... Well, you power the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of thing, yeah. yeah. OK, while you're doing that, do you often think to yourself about Mel Gibson films? Oh, little else. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, know that, I know Al Pacino played this part, but I also think Mel Gibson played Hamlet. So I, I'm going to say Hamlet. 
You're going to say Hamlet. OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. It has to be a correct answer, obviously. Let's see if it is correct, and let's see how many people said it. Hamlet. It's good. <laughs> Fantastic score, oh. Stephen. Hamlet scores you one. <laughs> yeah, brilliant answer. In, in 1990, Mel Gibson did indeed play Hamlet. OK, very, very good score, Stephen. Henry. Films is probably my worst thing, cos I can't ever remember which actor's which. <laughs> but you like films? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> we'll go for... Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. <laughs> OK, Steve. Shakes his head. He does, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? Or we just feel the wind just from in it? in the corner of my yeah. eye. <laughs> OK, you're saying Mission Impossible. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, how many people said it? Mission Impossible. Oh, dear, Henry. I'm sorry to say that is an incorrect answer, which means I'm afraid you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard. It is a film. Uh, Mel Gibson's not in it. Yeah. So, uh, you're half right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, Rob. Well, I have got some answers I'm reasonably confident about, but I don't think they'll be low. OK. But the way things have gone, I think it's better to go for the safe option, and I'm going to go for Mad Max. OK, you are saying Mad Max. Let's see how many people said Mad Max. <laughs> Down it goes, 28. Mad Max scores you 28. Yeah, Mad Max released in uh, 1979, set in a, in a post-apocalyptic Australia. Thanks very much, Richard. And finally, Craig, we come to you. Um, I can think of one film. I'm not sure if this is the right name. Passion of the Christ. We are looking for an obscure Mel Gibson film. The more obscure, the better. Simon's shaking his head. Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. Yeah. Let's see if that's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Passion of the Christ. <laughs> Unfortunately, that also is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Uh, yeah, uh, he directed it. He, he wasn't in it, I'm afraid. So, in some ways, it's a better answer than Mission Impossible, but... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it scores much the same. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Well, that's a very exciting scoreboard, offering a wide range of choices. Simon and Craig, Henry and Steve, you are way ahead there. Jamie and Stephen looking fantastic with a low score of one there. Keep up that low scoring, Jamie, on the next pass, and you should be easily through to the next round. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for Mel Gibson films. Mel Gibson films. Simon, what are your hobbies? Um, I like quite a lot of stuff. I like to read. Um, obviously, I study English literature, so whenever I can, I like to sit down with a book, have a read. The fact you were shaking your head to Craig's yeah. answer there suggests to me maybe you have, a, you have more than a passing knowledge of Mel Gibson's films. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I know, I know several answers I could give. Um, OK, well, you are the high scorers. You're the joint high scorers on 100. The lower the score you can give, the better, obviously. OK. And if you um, can find a pointless answer, it might just save your bacon. OK, in that case, I'll go for chicken run. You're saying chicken run. Good answer. Let's see how many people said chicken run. You're hoping to score as little as possible with this. Oh, it's good. Very, very good answer, Simon. Chicken Run scores you two. Your total now is 102, Richard. Uh, yeah, it's a very good answer. He played Rocky the Rooster in the 2000 film Chicken Run. He was the voiceover of Rocky the Rooster. Fantastic. Good answer, Simon. Right, Matthew. I think I'm going to go with um, a film called Bird on a Wire. Bird on a Wire. Very nice. OK, there's your red line. Below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. Above that red line, 
you become the high scorers. OK, let's see how many people said bird on a wire. It's good. You're through. Could be very good. Well done, Matthew. Bird and the Wire scores you five, takes your total up to 33. Yeah, great answer. Safely through from 1990, Mel Gibson and Goldie Horn. Mel Gibson plays an FBI informant. All perhaps I'm not allowed to say that. I'll be fine. What, you've blown his cover? Yeah. What? No, 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 yeah, it's fine. No, he doesn't play an FBI informant. He's a guy. He's just a guy. Just a guy who's got friends in the FBI. It's fine. OK, Steve. Steve, 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 you've got an uphill battle now. Yeah, very much so. Sadly, it wasn't Henry's subject, this. And sadly, um, it's not mine either. <laughs> really? OK, well, the high scorers are Simon and Craig on 102. If you can score one or less with this, you are through to the next round. Right. I do know two Mel Gibson films. Has anyone said them? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max. And I did know about Chicken Run, which um, I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to say. I've got one more, but I don't think it's going to be good enough. But I'll go for it anyway. And I think he did the voice in Pocahontas. Pocahontas? Yeah, so I'll go for Pocahontas. OK. There is your... I promise, there is a red line down there. You probably, you probably <laughs> can't see it. But there it is, nonetheless. If you come below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see if Pocahontas can do it for you. Let's see if it's a right answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Pocahontas. Is right. of the bag, you pulled it. Oh. That's pointless. So that adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,250. That's a fabulous Whoa. answer, Steve. That scores you nothing and leaves your score at 100. Richard? Uh, great answer. 1995, he plays it, does the voice of John Smith, the uh, Pocahontas' love interest in that film. Well, that is very bad news, I'm afraid, for Simon and Craig. Because even if Jamie and Stephen were just to make something up or just name a film, like Henry did, <laughs> uh, they still wouldn't overtake your high score, I'm afraid. However, what you could do here, Jamie, is try and find another pointless answer. You have a free reign. You can, you can take risks here. One of his early ones, if not his earliest, I'll go for Gallipoli. Gallipoli. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Gallipoli. It's right. Very, very well done, Jamie. That also is pointless, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,500. And, most importantly, it scores you nothing, giving you a total of one. Richard? Uh, yeah, another brilliant answer. What a way to end the round. Gallipoli, the, the World War I movie made in 1981, one of his very early films. Very good indeed. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with a high score. I'm sorry to say it's Simon and Craig. Bad luck, guys. Oh, well. You haven't been well served by our categories, have you? And I think we've just been rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what should they have said to keep them in the game? Uh, well, there were a whole bunch of pointless answers. We've, we've already heard two of them, but uh, there's a few more. Uh, there's Gallipoli and Pocahontas. The Million Dollar Hotel, which is based on a, on a story by Bono. Must, must watch that. Yeah, must, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a look, look at a few more. Uh, the Singing Detective, he was in the film remake of that. Uh, Attack Force Z. Mrs. Sofell, Summer City and The River. They were all pointless answers. Well done if you've got any of those. Very good. Thanks very much, Richard. Simon and Craig, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless Mel Gibson knowledge you needed to make it through to the final, so we have to say goodbye. But you have been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much for playing Pointless. Thanks. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be leaving at the end of this round very disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, the category for the second round is... World Geography. World Geography. OK, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium.
We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many mountains as they could. Mountains. Richard. Yeah, the correct answers on uh, these lists will all be mountains or volcanoes uh, of the Earth, so all over 3,000 metres high. Right, in round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but at least one of those answers is incorrect, so you've got to avoid those, otherwise you will score the maximum of 100 points. Right, your first set of seven answers is... Everest, Burge, Fuji... Popocatapetl, or as I've once heard it pronounced, Popocatapetl. <laughs> K2, Mariana Logan. Okay, we are looking for mountains. How's your geography, Stephen? Yeah, it's not bad. I guess K2 to you probably means one of these things back here, doesn't it? Yeah, something like that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> looking at those. I'm going to go for Mount Logan. Mount Logan. Because I think that is the highest mountain in Canada. Very good. You're saying Mount Logan with a degree of confidence. Let's see how many people said Mount Logan. That's correct. Very well done, Steve, and that's pointless, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,750. <laughs> and it scores you nothing. Mount Logan, Richard. Yeah, very good answer, and you're exactly right, the, uh, the highest mountain in Canada. Very well done. OK, Henry. Remember, there might very easily be another pointless answer in there, but there is also at least one incorrect answer. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to risk it a little bit to try and keep up with Stephen. Yeah, he set, he set the bar yeah. about as low as it goes, hasn't he, there? Yeah, I'm going to go for the one that... I don't know how to say. Popo catapetal. <laughs> Popo Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Got the one. Yeah. Well, Steve looks very happy with that. Yep, he thinks that's a great answer, but he's crossing his fingers. Um, OK, make of that what you will. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Popper Catepital. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's still going down. Down it goes. <laughs> a fantastic answer, Henry Popper Catepital, earning you a pat on the back from your dad and two points, Richard. Yeah, I'm going to call it Popper Catepital. Oh, I. Yep. <laughs> just to be contrary. No, just because I, th I think I would have trouble pronouncing it the way you're doing it. Popocatepetl. Well, Popocatepetl is uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a volcano in Mexico. And so the Spanish, I think, would say Popocatepetl. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are looking for mountains. Matthew? Um, clearly, the top one will be the most popular. Um, that leaves it as being which is the least popular out of Fuji and K2, or do I dare risk going with Burge? Um, I think I'll have to go safety and go for Fuji. You're going to say Mount Fuji? Yeah. Let's see how many people said Fuji. <laughs> Down it goes. Fuji scores you 16, Matthew. Fuji. Uh, yeah, Mount Fuji, very good. Uh, it's in Japan, very iconic in Japanese culture and art. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the uh, list, though. Everest, as, uh, as you suggested, would have scored you 89 points. K2 also uh, would have been very high. Uh, if you had gone with Burj, uh, it's an incorrect answer. would have scored you 100 points, so it's very, very, very good to go for Mount Fuji. Uh, Burj is it's Arabic for tower. The world's tallest tower is the Burj Khalifa they've just opened. And Mariana, what do you think, Alexander? Is that pointless or is it incorrect? I think it's incorrect. You are absolutely right. Mariana's Trench, of course, is the, the lowest place on Earth, so it would have got you 100 points. Very good. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's have a look at the scoreboard. Well, they're all very, very low scores. Jamie and Stephen couldn't get lower than yours. Um, Henry and Steve couldn't get much lower than yours. Matthew and Rob, 
your way out in front through no fault of your own. That's just how it is. Rob, you're going to have to do everything you can to find a pointless answer on the next pass and hope everyone else scores high. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Rob, we are going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for mountains, cook, ojos del salado, <clears throat> Spanish, <laughs> blanc, Junko Tabai, Kilimanjaro, Etna, Cotopaxi. Again, I can tell you that there is at least one pointless answer in there, and there is at least one incorrect answer, so be very careful. Rob, you are the high scorers on 16. You're going to have to see if you can find a pointless answer here. Yeah. I'm tempted to say I'll get me coat. <laughs> um, OK. It's a gamble. You've reached a decision. It's a gamble. I've reached a decision. And I'm going to go with Junko to buy. Excellent. We're all going to learn something here. <laughs> we are looking for mountains. You are saying Junko Tabai. Complete punt? Pretty much, yeah. Is there anything about it that sort of suggests mountain? Uh, no, I suppose the only rationale behind the punt is uh, I'm not sure you'd be able to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds as good as anything. Right, Junko Tobai, let's see if it is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. No, no! Unfortunately, Junko Tabai is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. I'm so sorry, Rob. Richard? Uh, yeah, very bad luck. We, we didn't make it up. Junko Tabai is the name of the first woman to climb Everest. That does, I'm afraid, mean that your score is unassailably in front and uh, the remaining teams are definitely through because even if they score the maximum of 100, they can't overtake you. So, Steve, 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 you are definitely in the head-to-head -head round. Right. So you can have a bit of fun with the board, if that's the right okay. word. You seem to know your way around the mountains of the world. Is that right? Um, well, I knew Popocatapetl. Mm -hmm. um, Unsurprisingly, I know how to say it. Um, I remember that from I don't think you school. do, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on, say it again. Papa Catapetal. Papa Catapetal, yes, right, good. <laughs> OK. Um... I have a feeling... <clears throat> from my junior school days, I remember, I think, a volcano being called Cotopaxi. So I'll have a punt at that one, Cotopaxi. Cotopaxi, OK. Let's see how many people said Cotopaxi. It's right. I think this could be going a long way down. Well done. That's another pointless, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £2,000. It also scores you nothing, leaving your score at two. Richard? Yeah, very good answer, Steve. It's in Ecuador and it's, it's a continuously active volcano, Cotopaxi. OK, very good indeed. Now, Jamie. Oj Oj however it's pronounced, Ojos del Salado, I think it's the, the highest mountain in the Andes, so I'll go for Ojos del Salado. Ojos del Salado. Let's see if this is a pointless answer. It wouldn't be brilliant if it were. Let's see how many people said it. Ojos del Salado. It's right. Fantastic, that's another point. Listen, it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £2,250. It scores you nothing and leaves your score after a fantastic double pointless at nothing. Richard? Uh, yeah, Oyas del Salado, it's in, uh, it's in Chile. It's, uh, that means it means the eyes of the salty mountain. Salty? Mm. It's not the tallest mountain in the Andes, though. Oh, no. Apologies. That's Aconcagua. <laughs> Which means the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the other answers there. We've, we've had a good look through. In Kilimanjaro, uh, it's the highest point in Africa. That would have scored you 48 points. Uh, the highest active volcano in Europe is Etna. We've got you 20. Mont Blanc, 18. And then uh, Mount Cook, 
would have scored one. Very handy, but uh, there's pointless answers all round here. We've already had two from Steve alone. Very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Well, Richard, I'm afraid the curse of Osman continues to cast a long shadow over this show. <laughs> so at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Matthew and Rob. I thought, I, I don't know, I keep, maybe I just keep misreading the, uh, the zen-like calm. <laughs> I keep thinking that means, yes, I know, I know the mountains of the world. Learn how to hide your anxiety, that's my tip. Yeah, OK, well, I, I, I will. I, well, I, I feel tremendous anxiety on your behalf, because I know we haven't seen the best of you. Um, but I'm afraid we have seen the last of you. I'm sorry to say, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Thank Brilliant. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. So, well done, Jamie, Stephen, Henry and Steve. You've made it through to the final head-to-head -head of the series. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. <laughs> Here's how it's going to work. You are going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. That's the important bit. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Simple as that. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many village people characters as they could. Village people, characters, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of these six regular character costumes as worn by the village people, perhaps most famously in the video of their 1978 hit YMCA. Again, at home, see if you can get all six of those. OK, Jamie and Stephen, because you've played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. <laughs> OK. OK. <laughs> OK, Jamie and Stephen, we are looking for village people characters. Um, I think we're going to go for the... The biker we're going for? Yeah. The biker. The biker. Henry and Steve, the biker has gone. There was a Red Indian. There was a cowboy. A policeman. There was a policeman. There was a construction worker. Some kind of sailor person. There was somebody who was in the <laughs> US forces, so we're not sure which one to go with. I suppose we don't really want to get it wrong. No, you don't want to get it wrong. Um, and I'm not sure if biker's right, so I suppose we want to make sure we get it right. We'll go for um, construction worker. Construction worker, OK. So we have biker and construction worker. Jamie and Stephen have gone with biker. Let's see if that is correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Down it goes. 17. <laughs> Henry and Steve have gone for construction worker. Let's see if that is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. So, Biker wins it for Jamie and Stephen. After the first question, it is 1-0 to Jamie and Stephen. Richard. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, all six. There'll be some uh, guilty people at home who've got all six of these, I suspect. Uh, there's the soldier with uh, four points, far and away the, uh, the most obscure. Then the biker, construction worker, then the cowboy. Uh, cop got 63. The cop was uh, Victor Willis, who's the original singer and writer of Village People, who now lives in Newport, Wales. So, uh, no. hi, Victor, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, and you'll be glad to know that you and the Native American were far and away the most famous members of the village people. <laughs> wow, Newport, Wales, brilliant. Here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Liberal Democrat leaders as they could. Liberal Democrat leaders, Richard. Yeah, any permanent leader of the Liberal Democrats since the current party's formation in 1988. OK. This time it is Henry and Steve to go first. Okay. 
Well, we're not sure on this one, but we're going to have to. I think we're working on the basis that people might not know the current one. So I think we'll go for Simon Clegg. OK, you're going to go for Simon Clegg on the basis that people may not know the current one. Jamie and Stephen, what are you going to go for? Well, there was David Steele. He was followed by Paddy Ashdown. He was followed by Charles Kennedy. I think he was followed by Mingus Campbell. And then we had Nick Clegg. So, which one? We Take your pick. I did the mountains. <laughs> go, well, go for... <laughs> <laughs> you want to go for that? Yeah. yeah, well, in that case, we'll go for Nick Clegg. Nick Clegg. <laughs> Do you see what they've that. done there, <laughs> Steve? <laughs> oh, dear. This is entertainment. They have gone for Nick Clegg. OK, so Simon Clegg, well, let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Simon Clegg. <laughs> Dear, bad luck, bad luck. You think of Shaun of the Dead? <laughs> Simon Clegg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and cruelly, let's see how many people said Nick Clegg. It just has to be right, obviously. Yep. Well, that scores 32. That's enough. So Nick Clegg wins it for Jamie and Stephen after two questions. Jamie and Stephen are 2 0 up. Now, Henry and Steve, you have to win the next one and the one after that to keep yourselves in the game. Richard. Yeah, uh, choosing Simon Clegg on the basis that people won't remember his name is uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, there have uh, been four leaders since 1988. If you'd said David Steele, you would have, you would have lost because uh, he was before the Liberal Democrats' current incarnation. Uh, Ming Campbell would have scored you ten, then Charles Kennedy, Paddy Ashton, and Nick Clegg will at least be uh, pleased. He's the, the most well-known of all the uh, Liberal Democrat leaders. OK. Jamie and Stephen, get one more and you are through to the final. Henry and Steve, it is your job to thwart them, otherwise you are off the show. <laughs> OK, here's your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Star Trek TV series as they could. OK, Richard, Star Trek TV series. Yeah, we're looking for the names of any of the four TV incarnations of the Star Trek franchise that followed the original 1960s TV series. Not looking for any animated series, feature films, or unaired pilots. Just the four TV incarnations of Star Trek that followed the original TV series. OK, Jamie and Stephen, it's your turn to go first this time. Well, again, I don't, I don't know any Star Trek series, but Stephen's an avid Trekkie. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yes, first sign of an avid Trekkie is they say, oh, right, yeah, when they're, when they're accused. Just, you yes. to say this one in Klingon, so, are you? Live long and prosper, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. He assures me, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine is what you are going to go for. Henry and Steve. There was one called The Next Generation, but I think that's the most famous, most famous one, so I suspect it that's... It might be right, <clears throat> though, so... Any port in a <laughs> storm, I'm tempted to say. Uh, my wife's mum went to school with somebody who was in that. Um, <laughs> I tell you what... Rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 I want to know more about your wife's mum. <laughs> your wife's mum went to school... Patrick Stewart, is it? In, in, in this country, yes. Yeah, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, yeah. OK. okay. So We're going to have to go for Next Generation. Next Generation, OK, you're going to go for the Next Generation. Jamie and Stephen said Deep Space Nine. Let's see how many people said Deep Space Nine. This for a place in the final and for a crack at the jackpot. OK, it's right. Look at that, down to 16. 16 for Deep Space Nine. And Henry and Steve, you are going for the next generation. If you win this question, it'll be a stay of execution and you'll remain on the show, at least till the next question. If you lose this and Jamie and Stephen win, they are straight through to the final and we say goodbye. OK, the next generation. Let's see if it can do it for you. Oh, 
So Deep Space Nine wins it, and it's a clean sweep after our third question. Jamie and Stephen go through to the final 3-0. Richard? Yeah, Deep Space Nine, very good answer. There is one answer that could have beaten it, and that's the most recent incarnation of the Star Trek franchise. Let's take a look at all four. Uh, Enterprise uh, would have just scored you seven points. There's Deep Space Nine on 16, Voyager, and uh, The Next Generation, which starred the, uh, the noted Shakespearean Patrick Stewart, who, of course, uh, went to school with Steve's wife's mum. <laughs> Good, OK. Thanks very much, Richard. Uh, so the losing player at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Henry and Steve. Dear, oh, dear. What were you hoping was going to come up? Um, questions on squash. <laughs> squash. Steps. Maths. Scra steps. Scrabble. The band Steps. Yes. As in H from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How about the Russian steps? You any good on them? Not quite so good. No. Geography again, you see. Henry and Steve, you've come so close, you've made it all the way to the head-to-head, -head, but I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless knowledge you needed to reach the final, which means I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye. But thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you. <laughs> for Jamie and Stephen, though, it's time for our Pointless final. Well, congratulations, Jamie and Stephen. You have fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> now, for the final time this series, you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,250. <laughs> mm. Now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer no one else could think of. We've had five pointless answers on the show today, and you've given us three of those. Let's hope you can find one more now between you. Firstly, you've got to choose a category from these three options, and you can go for... Basketball, contemporary artists, or musicals. Ooh. Do you right. Think? I mean, you're pretty good on your sport, aren't you, so... Basketball could be basketball yeah. teams. Yeah. Um, I think we'll give musicals a miss, don't you? Okay, yeah. So you contemporary artists. I think it's probably what it says. Contemporary artists could be Turner Prize winners. Yeah. What are you going to go for? Uh, contemporary artists. Go on then. Contemporary artists. Contemporary we'll artists, it is. Okay. Very good luck. Right. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Turner Prize winners as they could. You could have written the script yourself. Right, Richard. Yeah, we were looking for anybody who's won the Turner Prize since the inaugural award in 1984. Right. Okay, good luck. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £2,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Was it Grayson Perry? Chris Offerman. A very good one. Well, last year was Mark Lecky, I think. But I don't know if we want him or not. We don't want Tracy Emin, do we? C Chris Offerley was the one who did the stuff with Elephant Dung. <laughs> that, might, that might be... Uh... We've got Rachel White-Reed, who did, Rachel the, White did the concrete house inside out. Who did, she? who did lights going on and off? Oh, God, I don't know. Grayson Perry is the bloke who dresses up as... Uh, what's, what's the name of his character? I think you've got some good ones there. Okay, I think, I I think I've, I've a, completely exhausted my knowledge of the Turner Prize. Yeah, I'm now going to try and remember what we've just said. <laughs> Offerly. Yeah, okay. OK, that is your minute up. We were looking for Turner Prize winners. I now need your three answers. Um, well, we're going for uh, Chris Offerly. Chris Offerly. And his elephant dung. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Rachel White Reed. Rachel White Reed. And who was the other one you said? And Simon Starling. And Simon Starling. Of those, which would you reckon was your strongest chance of a pointless answer? I think Chris Offerly. Yeah, Simon Starling. Simon Starling. Simon Starling. Simon Starling. Simon, we'll put him third then. Simon yeah. Starling goes third. Which is your weakest? I think Ra Rachel White Reed. I think is the, the weakest. Okay. And Chris Offley. Yeah. And Chris oh, Offley in the middle. So let's put this up on the board in that order. Rachel White Reed, Chris Offley, and Simon Starling. There they are. How do you feel now you see them on the board? Uh, Middling. Yeah. 
middle. Could go either way. I now, listen, think. somewhere in there has to be a pointless answer. Maybe they're all pointless. OK, we were looking for Turner Prize winners. This was your least confident answer. Rachel White-Reed. Let's see how many people said Rachel White-Reed. Well, it's correct. It's always good. Down it goes. This is your first of three cracks at that jackpot of £2,250. Could all go towards that wedding in Rhodes. Oh, 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 oh. OK. They didn't ask Rachel Whiteread, did they, in the survey? They almost <laughs> certainly did, yes, yes. Um, well, I tell you, I, t I would take great heart from that. That's the one you had the least faith in, and it, it scored one. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot, 2,250 quid. Chris Ophelia is your second answer. If this is pointless, you walk away with £2,250. We were looking for Turner Prize winners. Let's hope nobody said this next answer. It has to be pointless for you to win the jackpot. Chris Ophelia, let's see how many people said Chris Ophelia. OK, for £2,250. It's all going in the right direction. The second of three shots at that jackpot. Yes! Yes! Let's get in there. Fantastic. Very, very well done. Thank you very much. Very, very well done. Oh, get in. Brilliant. Oh. Well, congratulations. You managed to find that all important pointless answer, which means you go home with a jackpot of £2,250. Well done. Oh, thank you. Great. Thank you. Wow, I dread to think how good your basketball knowledge is. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just terrifying. <laughs> Richard? Uh, yeah, very, very good category to pick. I think it might be the lowest scoring category we've ever had on Pointless. A whole host of other Pointless answers, including uh, Gilbert and George, Anthony Gormley, Simon Starling, also a Pointless answer. So that would have won you the money once again. He won with Shed Boat Shed. Mark Leckie, who you said earlier, that would have been a pointless answer. You could have given us three pointless answers. Uh, very, very impressive. The perfect category to pick uh, at the end of a series. Very, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Jamie and Stephen, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,250. <laughs> very well done. Well, that's all we've got time for this series. We hope you enjoyed all the pointless facts along the way. It's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>